Hi everyone, I'm Naima. Welcome back to my channel. I'm launching a new series called Breaking News, where I'll be sharing and unpacking brand new findings about long COVID from recent studies and research. In this video, I'll be telling you about a new study that came out last week on the 25th of May called Development of a Definition of Post-Acute Sequelae of SARS-CoV-2 Infection. It's quite a mouthful. But really, it is an attempt to come up with a clearer definition for long COVID, which is something we haven't yet had to date. The more we understand the key symptoms, different clusters of symptoms, and how they manifest, the closer we can get to finding a treatment. I'm not a doctor, I'm just someone with long COVID trying to better understand this new condition. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. This study is part of the National Institutes of Health, NIH, funded researching COVID to enhance recovery or recover program as it's more widely known, which is a US-based initiative to understand why some people develop long-term symptoms after a COVID infection and how to detect treat and prevent it. The study's goal was to understand the following. What symptoms are differentially present in SARS-CoV-2 infected individuals six months or more after infection compared with uninfected individuals? And what symptom-based criteria can be used to identify post-acute sequelae of SARS-CoV-2? Prove to infection cases. In layman's terms, the researchers wanted to develop a definition of long COVID based on self-reported symptoms and understand what are the key symptoms, number one, and how is life with long COVID compared to those who have not developed the condition. The researchers examined data from 9,764 adults in total, which included 8,646 who had COVID-19 and 1,118 who did not have COVID-19. Those with long COVID had been infected six months ago or more. They assessed more than 30 symptoms across multiple body areas and organs to then identify 12 symptoms that most set apart those with long COVID. After that, they created a scoring system where they assigned points to each of the 12 symptoms. The team then gave each patient a score based on symptom combinations. The score determined severity of the patient's illness. The study led to some interesting findings. Firstly, it identified 12 symptoms that most set apart those with and without long COVID. Post-exertional malaise or PEM, which as we know is one of the most debilitating parts of having a fatigue-related illness. Fatigue, brain fog, dizziness, gastrointestinal symptoms, heart palpitations, issues with sexual desire or capacity, loss of smell or taste, uh, chronic cough, chest pain and abnormal movement. They also learned that there were more severe manifestations of the condition in participants infected in the pre-Omicron era. So if you remember since 26th of November 2021, Omicron has been one of the more dominant variants and before that we were dealing with Alpha and then Delta. But we also need to bear in mind the caveat that those who have been more severely ill for longer are much more likely to be part of this recover initiative. The researchers also learned that those with recurrent infections were more likely to have a higher score and therefore be more severely unwell. We can infer that reinfection leads to having a more severe case of long COVID. There was a modest reduction in severity among fully vaccinated patients. So we know that the impact of the vaccine on long COVID has been inconclusive to date. So this adds to a very complex picture. The study also found that long-term symptoms following the COVID infection spanned multiple organ systems. So this is an illness that we initially thought was respiratory, but now know it can impact every part of the body. The diversity of symptoms may be related to persistent viral reservoirs. So I've talked about this in previous videos, but there have been a few studies that have shown evidence of the virus persisting in different parts of the body some months after the acute illness. Autoimmunity might also reflect the diversity of symptoms. This is where the body's natural defense system can't tell the difference between your own cells and foreign cells, causing the body to mistakenly attack normal cells. Given the wide range of long COVID symptoms, working out whether it represents one unified condition or a group of unique conditions is important.
So what's next? And more importantly, what does this mean for those of us with long COVID? It seems like the next port of call would be understanding whether long COVID is one unified condition or it presents multiple conditions. Then once we know that, it will be easier to understand which symptoms cluster together and how. We can then get closer to a treatment that can address the different types of conditions if that is in fact the case. We also need to understand the relationships between age, race, ethnicity, social determinants of health, vaccination status, comorbidities, and lots of other facets to understand how these might reflect different outcomes of the condition. But most importantly of all, hopefully soon, we can move away from trying to unpack and analyse what long COVID is, so working out what treatments can make a real difference for those of us with the condition. Please let me know what your thoughts on the study are if you've had a chance to look into it and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.